I'm Dan Sosnowski, the Editor-in-Chief of Chiropractic Economics Magazine, and I'm here at Parker Seminars Las Vegas 2018. It is my great pleasure to introduce someone who's probably known to all of you already, Kathy Mills Chang. She's a certified professional coder. She speaks nationwide. She's a renowned expert on coding, compliance issues. She's trained thousands of practices. She conducts audits. And she's a highly in-demand speaker for her expertise and her knowledge of everything involved in coding, compliance, and documentation. Kathy Mills Chang, what a pleasure to have you with us. Thank you, Dan. I appreciate you having me. All right. Well, uh, since you're speaking here at Parker, I'm sure you're getting a lot of questions and answers from the audiences you've been talking to. Yes. What are, what are, what are some of the top compliance uh, problems that you see in practices right now? Well, I just came off the stage from speaking for a couple of hours, and you'd, you'd be amazed at the number of Medicare questions. Yeah. And it's, it runs the gamut from people being concerned about the fact that uh, I'm so scared of Medicare, I don't even want any part of it, yeah. all the way to, of course we take Medicare, but, you know, it's easy. So it, it surprises me because... Um, Someone almost set me up by asking the question about an ABN form, for example, which 75 to 85 percent of the oh, time yeah. is wrong. So it says, thank you for the setup. Let me tell you the right way to do it. And Medicare itself, for me, is one of the easier things that we have because the rules are so clear. And the problem we have is we just don't necessarily stop and read the rules. So it's not to be afraid of. It's easy. Uh, to, to manage if you put the things in place the way that you should. In 2010, when Obamacare, PPACA, passed as a law, mm -hmm. compliance programs became mandatory. Oh, yeah. And they safe, they're, they're a safety net for you because they say, here's the policy, here's the way we do it. And in my mind, it kind of tightens that piece up for the practice. A lot of CAs in the room, uh, when I asked them, how do you get your training? They said, well, I, don't, I just get it. Yeah. And they're not properly trained so how can we expect the doctor to really expect to get the support they need from their staff when they don't invest in a little bit of training. Gotcha. Well, yes. you know, you say that Medicare is easy. When I have to go to CMS to do research on an article, uh, I, I would rather be over at the IRS going through their documentation. I hear you. It can be complicated. Uh, where should chiropractors be focusing most of their energy in the, in the compliance room? In the compliance realm, I think it's safe to say 75% of doctors right now are non-compliant with HIPAA. Right. And HIPAA is a big mamma jamma. You need to understand HIPAA because it applies to everyone. And just a few tweaks of getting some things in place. Right now, due to malware, due to uh, patient privacy issues with EHR and other things, it is the bug that can bite us the hardest. Yeah. And while it's not super difficult to get it up to speed, taking the effort to really get it up to speed is going to be important. Doesn't a HIPAA compliance program for a chiropractic practice uh, consist essentially of two components, uh, a security program, and um, privacy. In a privacy program. Yes. And also there's a new kind of omnibus uh, law that involves some breach notification. But yes, right. not super hard. Right. The biggest mistake doctors make is not doing a risk analysis. Right. Going through and analyzing exactly where everything is, where are we now, what do we need to manage, show they fixed it, and then that they've managed it as well. Gotcha. So now that we're in our, I guess we're coming up into our third year of uh, ICD-10 coding. Yes. Uh, that was really a sea change uh, that everybody had to <laughs> get on board with quickly. Uh, are people having problems with it? And no. So that's not a that's no. an issue at all. It's not. And and I like to remind doctors that the coding is really just for the billing. Yeah. That your English diagnosis in your documentation is most important. Gotcha. And then how you code it for an insurance company uh, has to be right, but it's not the end of the world. Gotcha. Uh, we, we joke about in chiropractic there's not a code for a facet syndrome gotcha. and a lot of doctors like to diagnose that diagnose, diagnose it yeah. just doesn't necessarily have the number I have not seen as many problems with ICD-10 I think it was a it was kind of like a big pop and then nothing almost like the Y2K thing exactly gotcha. and it wasn't super hard right. gratefully well uh, uh, you're leading a team of uh, 30 or more people at KMC University you yes. guys are always uh, on the move you're you're uh, trying Trying to stay ahead of the game. Uh, anything new and notable for 2018 you'd like us to know about? 
You know, I think the malware issue in HIPAA is what's oh, yeah. going to really get us. Uh, I know a lot of people are focusing in on that. Um, I'm kind of going back to old school roots and we are putting a lot of emphasis on CA training. Got it. And part of the reason why is because, you know, there's a, a very important aspect that a CA really does play in, in the office and that's to protect their doctor. Correct. So when we invest in a team member and don't think that they're just a temporary person to answer the phone, it can really exponentially increase the value of your practice, the possibilities of practice and all the rest. Yeah. And I, I think Think that this should be the year of getting your CA up to speed and above and beyond because it will be an opportunity for one plus one to equal four. Absolutely and uh, a lot of times when people think about security and they think about data breaches in a practice what, what they have in mind is some shadowy hacker in a basement mm. a, but in fact the it seems like the larger and, and more, most persistent threats uh, are the social engineering attacks where someone calls your practice and tries to trick your, your CA and to, so she, uh, he or she can often be the first line of defense against Absolutely. Them. And that also includes the protection of patient information. Yeah. Uh, we had a situation with a client where a CA was kind of not paying attention, had been texting with the patient, yeah. and her phone got lost. That's a, a notifiable breach Absolutely. that opens and exposes the practice tremendously. The doctors are loving to get into those kind of devices and they need to be aware it's not okay. It's okay, but let's put these safeguards in place. Okay. Yeah. Well, hey, we're in our closing uh, day here at uh, Parker Seminars, and so I wish you the uh, very best as you close Thank out you. the conference. I yes. hear your presentations have gone very well. Well, it was a very exciting full room, 700 or so in there, and uh, I love when we can move the dial just a little bit on on uh, helping more people know about chiropractic. Fantastic. Kathy Wilstrang, thank you so much. Thank you, Dan.